In this video, we're gonna deep dive into DaVinci Resolve's audio page, Fairlight. I'm gonna teach you the stuff that you need to know and you'll probably use every time you work with audio in Resolve. Since I'm gonna be sharing a ton of information, I've broken this video up into part one and part two. And of course, when it comes to working with audio, you wanna make sure that you're recording with the best equipment. I use a lav that I have hidden on me right now to record my dialogue audio. I also use an external recorder that records 32-bit float so your audio will never peak again. It's amazing. And if you're new here, I'm Allie. Will and I own a video production company in Toronto, Canada. We work on a lot of brand campaigns like commercials, social media videos, and we have this YouTube channel where we release weekly videos all about editing and troubleshooting in DaVinci Resolve, as well as videography, tips and tricks, and gear reviews. So to stay in the loop, subscribe to our channel. All right, now let's hop into Resolve and get started. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve's edit page here. Well, you can do some more basic general audio work in the edit page. Fairlight's where it's at. It is completely dedicated to working with audio in post-production. And you may or may not know that each of the pages in Resolve work together. So you can see here that I have some talking head clips, some voiceover and music. When we pop over to the Fairlight page, our timeline and the assets on it show up in the same way. We're gonna get into what some of these different panels are in just a sec, but first, my workspace probably looks a little different than yours. To reset it to its default, go up to workspace and choose reset UI layout. I'm gonna hover my mouse over here and drag down because I don't need that much space in my timeline. Okay, so the mixer panel allows you to balance audio levels, add effects, EQ, dynamics, and pan your audio. So if you wanna close any of these, you can click on it to get rid of it. Metadata shows the info associated with your selected file. The inspector panel gives you quick access to several commonly used effects and tools. If you want easy access to all of your assets, click on media pool to open it up. And there we go. Clicking on effects brings up tons of different audio effects. Oh, and I wanna show you this for a sec cause it's cool. It makes life a little easier. As you work more and more in Fairlight, you're gonna to start to accumulate some go-to effects. So you might wanna favorite them. To do that, you can select the effect and click on the star here. And there we go. The de in this case is now listed as one of my favorites. And of course, if you decide after a while, wait a minute, I actually don't want this in my favorite list. Just click the star again and it's gone. Okay, awesome. This slider here allows us to easily make our tracks bigger or smaller. And the horizontal slider allows us to increase or decrease the zoom in view of our timeline. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts, command minus to zoom out and command plus to zoom in. If you'd like to move your timeline left to right, you can use this slider here. And one of the many things that I love about the Fairlight page is you can zoom way, way in on your audio. Just gonna show you this. So in the edit page, you can only zoom into a point where you can see and move over one frame at a time. Whereas in Fairlight, I have this click sound here that I wanna remove. And it's even smaller than one frame. So I can zoom way, way in here. And then with my selection tool active, I can click on one of these points and draw a straight line across to flatten out that sound. This is called sample level audio repair. And this is super helpful if you have random pops or clicks in your audio that you wanna isolate and remove. And now let's have a listen. It's gone, great. Next. Let's select timeline view options. If you want to get a different view of what the clips and the audio on your timeline look like, you can check some of these out. We can turn the video track on and off. I don't know why you wouldn't want to see full waveforms, but if you don't want to, turn this off. If you want to trim any of your audio, you can hover your mouse over the end of it and drag in like so. To get more organized, let's rename our tracks by double clicking where it says audio one, I'll call that camera audio, VO or voiceover for audio two, and I will change the audio three track to music. If you'd like to add another track, right click here, go to add track, 
and you can choose to add mono, stereo, and so on. I'll choose stereo and a new track has shown up. If you no longer need that track, you can make sure it's selected and choose delete track or something I do usually at the end of working on a project is delete empty tracks. So any track that doesn't have anything on it is gonna be deleted. I'm also more of a visual learner as I think a lot of us editors are. So I like to have an easy system for myself when it comes to seeing which tracks are what on my timeline by changing the color of them. So I'll select my talking head clips, right click, Clip color, I prefer these to be olive. Right click on my voiceover, change it to teal, and I leave my music purple. I'm gonna drag the camera audio track down a bit. You can now see that we have the option to lock the audio on this track. So now I cannot move or do anything to affect or adjust the audio on the A1 track. Click on the lock icon again to unlock. R allows you to record audio directly into DaVinci Resolve. I never use this. S allows us to solo a track so we hear only the audio on that track. M allows you to mute a track. Next, I'll show you the tools that I'm often switching in between and that you need to know. We have our selection tool. This allows us to grab a specific range of audio. The scissors are the razor tool. So wherever your playhead is on your timeline, when you press the razor, it will make a cut or an edit point. This horseshoe looking icon is something I always have turned on. It is for snapping. Let's turn it off for a second. So let's say we have our voiceover up on the A1 track and we wanna bring it right up to the end of this audio here. Well, if we don't have snap turned on, it's kinda hard to just get it exactly to the end. But let's turn snap on. Now, when we try to bring it right up to the end of this audio, it snaps into place. So keep snap on. Next, we're gonna look at flags and markers. They both are great tools for organization and making notes for your future self. To use flags, first we have to select something on our timeline, click on the flag, and now it shows up in our file. Let's double click on it to add a note. So let's say on this file, I need to make sure that I spend some time DSing the person's voice, which we're gonna learn a little bit later. So I would write in the notes, DS. Okay, you could change this to whichever color you like. Great. We also have markers, which are a little bit different. Depending where our playhead is on our timeline, when we click on the marker icon, a marker will show up in that spot. You can change the name of your marker. So I will name this marker audio add a note. And the last thing I do here is I would increase the duration the marker shows. One full second, done. Now we have the option to click and drag this marker out over this clip of will, indicating that I want this particular clip to be addressed. Okay, now the difference between working with markers and flags is markers stay in the spot that you created them on your timeline, whereas the flag stays with the clip itself. Next, let's create an in and an out point, which I will explain a little bit more in just a second. I wanna just hear a little part of this voiceover. First, I will solo the voiceover track. Now where the playhead is, press I on the keyboard to create an in point. I'll move over a little bit. Press O where my playhead now is to create an out point. In and out points used on specific parts of your timeline, select whatever's within those points. You would use in and out points if you wanted to export just a small portion of your audio clip, but I wanna show you something else. So this is our loop tool. Let's click on it so it's red so we can turn it on. And our audio now loops to play our selection over and over again. Now, one thing I got to show you because this drove me bonkers when I was starting out in Resolve is how to remove in and out points. Go up to mark, there we go, clear in and out. You can also press option X. We can increase or decrease our volume in a few different ways. One way, I'm just gonna drag this down, is to hover your cursor over this line here. You can drag it up or down if you'd like to. Just undo that. Another way that you can increase or decrease volume is with your audio track selected in the inspector panel by adjusting this slider here. And another thing you can do that I really love is let's say that your waveforms are just looking really small and you don't want to adjust the volume, but you do want to make the waveforms bigger so that they're easier to see. To do this, 
with your audio selected. On a Mac, you can hold down Option and Command and use your mouse scroller to scroll up and down to make the waveforms look bigger or smaller. So here's a spike in audio that's louder than the other areas. If you have louder parts like this or quieter parts, you can manually adjust volume very precisely using keyframes. On every project I work on, I'll go through and manually adjust the volume like this because it makes my dialogue sound more professional and pleasing to the ear. So let's bring our playhead to this area and in our inspector tab, going up to volume and pressing this keyframe, which now shows here, move over to just past the tall part of audio with our cursor and add another keyframe. And then at the tallest point, add a third keyframe. Now what we can do is select that third keyframe, click down and reduce this part of the audio slightly. And you can see the waveform shrinking as we do so. A faster way of adding keyframes is to hold down option on your keyboard. We'll just move over a bit and clicking on your chosen area, and there you go. As you manually adjust peaks in your audio, you wanna have a listen back with fresh ears to make sure that the changes you made weren't too abrupt or obvious. So there you go, that's part one of working in DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight page. Watch out for part two that will be coming out very soon and linked in the description below where we're gonna cover how to reduce and remove frequencies that aren't needed or that are annoying in someone's voice. More of my favorite effects that I use on all of my professional video edits, working with music and much more. Thanks for checking this video out. I hope you have a lovely day and we will see you in part two.